Today I'm going to be installing a condensing unit on a rooftop and it's going to be a hot one today so I'm getting help from this Supco Trade Fox umbrella. I've got my copper lines cleaned, deburred, and ready to braze. Putting these wet rags on the service valves to protect them from the heat. Then I'm going to remove my valve caps, then my Schrader valve cores with my Apian valve core removal tools. Attach my refrigerant hose to the liquid line, then attach my NitroView flow indicator to my nitrogen regulator. Then attach the refrigerant hose to the flow indicator. Now what I'm going to do, I have my nitrogen regulator closed. I'm going to barely open it. Then I'm going to open my NitroView all the way to purge all of the air out of the lines. Then I'm going to close down on the valve until it's at the braze point on the flow indicator. Now I can begin brazing on my 7A suction line. I'm using 15% Silfos. This tip is a little too small for this size copper piping, but I still made it work. And I did find a slightly bigger tip that worked a lot better on the second braze joint. Again, this is brazing, not soldering. There's a pretty significant heat difference in between the two welding methods. I quickly cooled the lines down with some wet rags. Now I'm capping the suction line. What I'm doing now is a nitrogen pressure test. I'm going to set my regulator to 200 PSI. Then I'm going to test all my braze joints with soap bubbles. And once I'm sure that there's no micro leaks, I'm going to release the nitrogen back to its home in the atmosphere. Next, I'm going to hook up my Megaflow vacuum rated valve core removal tools valve cores are still out and I'm gonna hook up a third valve core removal tool just to make it a little easier to do a decay test this is where I'm gonna put my micron gauge so it's not in line with the vacuum pump and I've got these valves shut I've got my field piece vacuum pump I'm gonna turn this ballast to open and I'm gonna turn this vacuum pump on <sighs> I'm going to open my valves on my Apian valve core removal tools. And once this reaches 3000 microns, I'm going to shut down on the ballast on the vacuum pump. It's calibrating right now. All right, we're way past uh 3,000 and close down the ballast and let her vacuum down. Now it's time to hook up my high voltage AC whip. I know this is a little short. There are no extra AC whips in stock and nobody was going to buy me one to install it. So I have to make use of what I have in this situation. Next, I'm going to tighten down my contactor lug nuts with my Wheeler torque wrench. I believe this one was 22 pounds per inch. And now I'm just hooking up the low voltage wires. And you can see on my micron gauge, I'm already in double digits. This is my fifth time in a row that I've achieved this in under 10 minutes and I'm still using the same vacuum pump oil. Shh, don't tell field piece. I promise I'm gonna change the vacuum pump oil soon. Now that I've got everything hooked up, I'm gonna do my DK test where I isolate the hoses from the vacuum pump and actually turn the vacuum pump off and watch for a significant rise after 10 minutes. You don't wanna see it rise above 1000. That could indicate moisture or a leak in the system. Next thing I'm going to do is break vacuum by opening the liquid line first. I chose the liquid line first because that's what the install manual said to open first. And I'm not using my service wrench to open the suction line as I've had these strip out the suction line service valve before, so this is why I'll get it started with a bigger wrench. And then once it's broken free, finish opening the suction line with my service wrench. So now the line sets are full of refrigerant. I'm reinserting the valve cores with my valve core removal tool. I assure you there is not going to be any air entering the system. I've seen comments about this before. It's not really possible this way. Make sure to tighten the service valve caps. They do leak. I apply power to the system. Everything was running. I'm using the old school analog gauges to check my target superheat and it needs a little bit of juice. So I'm going to purge this air out of the line and then give it a couple of short squirts of refrigerant until I meet my target superheat. It didn't take long to meet my 12 degree superheat. Everything is looking good. We are cooling. Thank you so much for watching. This fix is done.